afternoon. I'm Valentina Galluzzi and I'm a geologist. I work for the high resolution camera. Okay. <laughs> for the high resolution camera part of the Symbiosis instrument on board Beti Colombo uh, spacecraft. So uh, today I will speak to you about the importance of geological mapping for future targeting choices. This is the Symbiosis team of geologists. <laughs> we all work on geological mapping of Mercury based on the data available now, it means messenger data, mariner turn data, in order to decide future targets for the Betty Colombo mission and in particular for the Symbiosis instrument. So geological mapping on a planet is important. Of course on Earth we know why, because we have a lot of natural hazards and so on, but on a planet we do it for future purposes. And planetary geological mapping is the result of photo interpretation. It means that we have to observe the available da data, interpret the available data, draw in the lines, and compare the lines with other kind of data sets, and then rethink on what we did wrong, what we, <laughs> we did right, and change our ideas continuously. So this is a loop, a cycle that we make several times, but how many times? <laughs> well, of course, it, means, uh, it depends on experience, but most of all, it depends on the available data sets, the quality of uh, available data sets, uh, for example, so data sets uh, resolution. So what is certain is that the more loops you make, and the more you know and gain a deepened knowledge of the planet's surface. So knowing the planet's surface means that you are aware of the future needs and the target that the spacecraft will need. So Mercury, <laughs> since Symbiosis will be the eyes of Bepi Colombo, we must know Mercury like the back of our hand. So uh, Mercury uh, has a lot of targets that are interesting. For example, folds, kinematic markers, hollows, bands. All these targets have, uh, there are several factors influencing target study. Uh, for example, illumination direction, image resolution, area coverage, kind of data sets that we are looking at. So, but every kind of target has its own priorities. It means that if I'm concentrated on folds, for example, illumination direction is very important. If I'm concentrated on hollows, since they are very small features on Mercury, probably the image resolution is more important than the other factors, but all the factors are important. So <laughs> it is important to divide uh, targets into thematic fields in order to estimate the priorities for each kind of target. That is why we are working on databases of future targets divided into thematic fields, which will describe ideal needed uh, illumination direction, image resolution, uh, the needed area coverage, means uh, if it is a small feature, maybe it needs, it needs just one picture. If it's a long fold, it needs a, a series of pictures and so on. So <laughs> we are planning also to make an importance ranking. This is very important in uh, target, uh, targeting choices because uh, we can't, of course, image the whole planet. 
we have to uh, pay attention on data volume uh, control. So uh, an important ranking of each target is what we need. So basically uh, what is important now is to define uh, these fields and, uh, and thus uh, study the uh, available data sets. In our case, studying the data sets coming from Messenger, for example. Uh, uh, so if I study a fault with, with the available data sets, I can study this fault uh, in all these corners, but uh, I, uh, if I know it well, I, uh, I can say, hey, I need to see this fault from another point of view, with another uh, lighting direction, so we can see in the future if it will be possible. So I will bring you an example of what I did with the available data sets on Mercury, especially on the Victoria Quadrangle, which covers 6.5% of the planet. And it was called after this structure, Victoria Rufus. Uh, and what I did basically was to take the available base maps coming from messenger mission and make a geological map of the area. All these base maps were very important. They have different resolution, different kind of coverage, but they were all, all of them were important because they have slight differences that are useful to uh, interpret the structures. In particular, I found myself using these two base maps. One is the BDR base map at 166 meters per pixel. And the other one is the flyby base map, which is 500 meters per pixel. So why did I use uh, <laughs> so two different uh, resolution? Because the, uh, this base map here has, a, has an opposite illumination direction with respect to this. So this base map was very useful in, in some cases. But since I used uh, many different map uh, resolutions, the, my first problem was which mapping scale should I use to make my uh, map and then uh, the output. So there is a known rule from Waldo Tobler in 1987 that says that the mapping scale should be uh, uh, the raster resolution multiplied by 2000. But since, uh, because of course if you look at a scale which is too small, you will see everything but you will not get all the particulars. At a larger scale, you will uh, know better the part particulars, but if you use a scale which is too large, you will totally lose control of what you're doing. So it is important to follow rules, but since I had many different resolution, I had to ch choose an intermediate resolution, uh, let's say a fake resolution, because all the quadrangles that I used uh, were, were important. So I consider a uh, 300 meters per pixel resolution and calculating thus a mapping scale uh, of uh, 600,000. Uh, by following USGS rules, uh, which say that uh, your mapping scale should be two times to five times larger than the output scale, I made the uh, inverse calculation. So <laughs> Uh, by mapping at a scale of uh, 600,000, I could have an output of uh, 1.2 million to uh, 3 million scale. I decided to use the 3 million scale because mapping at five times larger than the output makes a cleaner output of the lines. The lines uh, seems much smoother, so I decided to, for, to go for this uh, resolution. So, as I told you before, even if I had a uh, 166 meters per pixel base map, it actually uh, shows some flaws. It is not 
the same everywhere. In here we have two long shadows, some missing tiles, and in here we have uh, no shadows at all. So uh, there are some, some problems that sometimes I had to uh, avoid using the USGS IC3 uh, software making mosaics to cover these gaps. So even topography was important because we have available both the topography coming from the laser altimeter and topography coming from a stereo, uh, stereo imaging. So uh, the stereo topography has a much lower resolution. It is one kilometer per pixel. But actually, it was very useful because if you consider messenger uh, MLA tracks, they are very widely paced to the south. So it means that if you use MLA, which is very precise on the spot, but has to calculate the topography in between the lines, uh, you won't get much information from this. So stereotopography is prob uh, probably less precise on the spot, but it's more complete. So uh, that's why uh, I use it a lot. So this is the final line work. I mapped craters uh, larger than five kilometers and I mapped also crater material for craters larger than uh, 20 kilometers. There are actually more than 1,800 craters over here. Uh, then I uh, mapped the geological contacts, structures, and so on. And this is the final output. I choose random colors because actually there, are, there is no uh, rule yet <laughs> for the colors. And if you're interested in the scientific results, I'll, I'll be doing a seminar on Friday. So uh, I want to speak about an example target. Uh, I, I made a method to calculate fault slip data uh, using faulted craters. So since this method is very useful to assess fault kinematics, it turned out that we need further precision in assessing this data. Uh, the mythos the, consists in building a circle that matches one side of the faulted crater, copy the circle, and dragging it to the other side, uh, making it ma uh, match in the other side of the faulted crater, and so I can get the uh, horizontal slip of the fault then I can calculate the vertical slip of the fault by using topography. Uh, I won't bother you with the scientific <laughs> things about this method, but basically uh, I had to use many software and tools to apply this method, and I still have uh, not much control on the error. So having a tool that helps uh, us controlling uh, where do, uh, you put the circles, for example, uh, uh, measuring how many <laughs> uh, several tries of putting the circles uh, would help us in uh, um, controlling the error on the measure. So I found myself using uh, crater, crater tools most of the times, but uh, to make the uh, profiles I usually export the profile to uh, Excel because I don't like very much how ArcMap uh, uh, uses the profiles. So <laughs> if anyone wants to uh, develop a method on that, it's welcome. welcome. So uh, I'll just make a summary. So uh, targeting uh, for targeting purposes, the study of available data sets is very important because, uh, because we can use them to make the geological maps and then choose the targets. So uh, targets will, will be divided into field-oriented databases. With database, I mean a 
a shape file inside the GIS, which means a table, which means it is uh, the table can have several fields that can define when, where, and how symbiosis can spot the target, uh, of course, in scientifically reasonable, uh, reasonable conditions. So, uh, tables, of course, are easily, uh, easily exportable to any software, but we need standards. It means that I do a database of targets and another person do a database of targets, we must be able to combine these data sets and be able to use them together. So we really need standards to use with this. And that's, and that's all, thank you. <laughs>